unboxing and review of the Apple Maker EK21. Um, this is a number pad uh, that supports VIA software uh, for reprogramming the keys. So sound test is going to be coming up after the unboxing. Included in the box is the number pad or macro pad itself. There's an instruction manual. And as well, there is um, the secondary box, uh, which contains your accessories. Uh, so that includes a braided cable um, that is gold plated with a USB port. Um, and then there's a switch and keycap puller. First impressions of the number pad itself. I really like this gray on white color scheme. Um, and then there is uh, protective films on both the top as well as the bottom of the keypad itself. Um, you're going to have two two modes here. One is the 2.4 gigahertz and then one is the Bluetooth. And then also you have a USB port there if you want to connect by cable. And this dongle is the 2.4 gigahertz dongle. Um, so the bottom uh, sticky side, of course, you have to take it off as well. And let's just l listen to the first sound test here. Ooh, that's smooth. There's like a volume knob here. That is very smooth. If you do a lot of data entry, having the uh, number pad on the left side of the your usual keyboard is really good for ergonomics because you can use your mouse on the right hand for moving between fields. Um, there is a volume knob here and uh, there's a little bit of tactility uh, in regards to that. And here's another sound test uh, with the microphone a little bit closer. Uh, when you buy this um, keyboard off of Amazon, you're going to have three, four options for switches. Uh, one is the black switch, one is the Apple Maker Flamingo switch, one is the Gatron Pro Yellow, and then one is the Wisteria Linear switches. So the one uh, I decided to go with was the Gatron Pro Yellows, uh, but I did also have some Gatron Browns lying around. So what I did is I swapped out the top three rows, less use keys for Gatron Browns for a more tactile feel, um, while the rest of the keyboard, um, I kept a Gatron Pro Yellows. Um, I also had some additional keycaps, like this yellow keycap on the top left here uh, was left over from my Apple Maker TH80 Pro. Um, so I use that as a kind of a layer switch key um, so I can program additional keys and macros onto this keyboard. Uh, you can reprogram any of these keys um, and move around um, the different buttons. Uh, for me, I moved the divide and multiplication on top here. Um, and then what else did I do? I because of my work with data entry, um, I use the character A a lot. So I've mapped this key as a secondary layer. So what that does is when I press this, all of these buttons are remapped. And the number three here is actually remapped to A. And then the number six here is remapped to R. Um, what else? And then this is usually a volume knob. But what I've done is I actually mapped this to um, switching windows, which is just windows um, tab, uh, sorry, uh, windows um, shift and then the right arrow if I'm going right. So that, that swaps the window to another window because I have multi um, monitor setup. So that's just an idea to give you of like what you can do with the macro pad. And in terms of the uh, DAO itself here, it's very, there's a very minor bump on each of these clicks and uh, you can hardly feel it, but um, it's very smooth overall. So there's a quirk to the system. If you ever decide to move around your keys, uh, just keep in mind the default key, the backspace is here on the top right corner. So you can see I moved my backspace to here, um, but the system still thinks the backspace is here for some of the status indicators. So for example, if you wanted to turn off the backlights, you would do function plus backspace to turn off the backlights. So right now there's no backlight. And if I do that, the, so you, you see what I mean? Like the backspace is here, but this is not activating anything. 
So you just have to keep in mind that like, this is what's turning off the backlight. So if you do move around the buttons and reprogram them with the with the um, with the VS software, just keep in mind and have this manual on hand because some of the status indicators are going by the default button placement here. In terms of the software support, uh, you're going to be using VIA to reprogram the keyboard or if you want to set macros or anything uh, advanced like that. Um, so to get started, you would download the VIA software uh, by going to this website here. Um, you can just pause the video if you need to write it down. And then uh, on GitHub here, you're going to have all the op uh, options, whether you're on Windows, Macs, or Linux. Um, just download the, um, the file, install the program, and then in addition to that, you need to download two additional files. Um, go to, just search up this uh, on Google, and um, it's going to be the first file. So you're going to download the via USB JSON file, and then you're also going to download the via 2.4 gigahertz uh, JSON file. Uh, so once you have these downloaded and installed, um, so you're going to have your software kind of looking like this. Uh, just So default is going to look like this with three tabs. Um, I plugged my keyboard into the USB wire. At least this is how I set it up on the first time. Honestly, I cannot get it working now. But to get it working, supposedly, uh, you get to this tab, show design tab, and then it's going to populate a new tab here so if you see now it's three click now there's four you come in here and you're gonna need to load uh, definitions so this is where you go into your downloads folder and you find those two files the USB and the 2.4 gigahertz you might have to extract these files first uh, just load in the USB file and then I'm also gonna load in the 2.4 gigahertz so if I recall correctly I got it working by loading both of these files previously. And then once these files are loaded, you should be able to see your keyboard pop up here. And this is where you would interact with the VIA software to kind of program the macros. Um, however, <laughs> for the life of me, I cannot get this thing to work a second time. So I've already programmed the macros um, and I don't, I don't really recall what I did basically to get them working. Um, so yeah, the VS software is really well reviewed. So I'm thinking this is more of a Apple maker problem because officially the VS software does not support this keyboard, the EK21. Uh, and so that's why they're asking you to load these JSON files. And in the software manual, it actually tells you when you load these definitions to use a V2 definitions. So for example, if I try to do this, use v2 definition load it pops up with all these different errors so i'm thinking um the first time i did it i probably didn't click this anyways maybe a reboot of my computer will fix it or if i reset the keyboard maybe it'll fix it i'm not gonna take a chance because i kind of already programmed it the way i like it um but um yeah so this is kind of like a start um hopefully somebody figures out what I did wrong here or can comment on what is the correct way to do this because loading only one definition also does not work. Um, so if I switch it over to 2.4 gigahertz and unplug the USB, it also does not work. Re-upping the software again also does not work. So I'm not sure exactly what I did. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this VS software is the best part about this keyboard, but it's also the worst part about this keyboard. That's it for my review and uh, opinion about the EK21 uh, number pad slash macro pad. Um, and all honestly, for $59 Canadian dollars, it's a pretty good deal, um, especially if you don't need more of the advanced functions like the macro function or needing to reprogram some of the keys. Um, there's of course also the RGB elements um, if you're into that thing I'm re really not but uh, you can sw swap out the colors and all that stuff um, however if you do need to use the macro function I'll probably look for an officially supported 
uh, number pad but they the this downside of that is they're usually much more expensive um, so that's it uh, if you're still interested in purchasing this keyboard there will be an Amazon affiliate link down below um, in addition please make sure to subscribe uh, I'm trying to get to 2,000 subscribers